Welcome to the World of Book Reviews and Beyond. I'm Judy Mario, your host, and tonight we're going to be talking about an exceptionally wonderful children's book called Icarus the Iguana, and it is by Cindy Masiolik. And Cindy is an, a pretty well-known author in the children's market, but also in other genres as well. And she's worked with me before on the Life Choices books. Welcome, Cindy. Glad to have you here. Well, thanks for having me, Judy. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the book. Uh, well, Icarus is a very special iguana. He, uh, he wants to show his owner that he, is, he can do anything in the world, but in the end, he just wants to be your friend. And I think that's a really important lesson for kids to learn, is that it doesn't matter what people do, you want to look at their heart, you want to connect with them on that level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a good message that comes through in the book. I think it's an exceptional message. And I think it's a message for adults as well as yes. for children. <laughs> it really is a great book. Thank and you. I love the way it rhymes. Every page is, rhymes. Uh, I love, love, love to rhyme. I think I've rhymed since I was a little kid. Yeah. Now, where did you get this idea for Icarus? Uh, Icarus actually came about because a friend of mine had a baby, and uh, they happened to have a pet iguana. And they were upset because there were no children's books with an iguana as the main uh, character. And, you know, I'm always thinking, and I'm like, huh, let's see what I could do with that. And, like I said, I love to rhyme, mm -hmm. and I love turning a story through rhyme. So I just took a crack at it, and I personally fell in love with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a fabulous book. When I, when I got it and read it, I was like, ooh, kids are going to love this. Aww. Ooh, adults are, too, because I do. I do. So you've written some other children's books too, haven't you? You have um, some coming up soon? I have two new books coming out and they should be out in February. And in total, I think there will be about 30. 30? Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Are you doing it on all different kinds of animals or what? Uh, there's a variety. There's three series that I'm doing. Um, there'll be other books in this series. This is called the Exotic Pet Series. Mm. And uh, then there will be a book about a little Shih Tzu. Okay. Or actually a series about a little Shih Tzu. And then a series um, uh, with a cockatiel. Oh, and wow. I had a cockatiel for a long time, so she's going to be teaching a few lessons through amazing, her books. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Now, are we going to see more of Icarus in, in these other books? Um, you know, I don't know. At this point in time, I don't anticipate that. But Icarus was a long time coming to fruition, so uh, I think that uh, he may need to go out and explore life a little bit more. The artwork was incredible. Yes. Did you do the artwork or did you have a, an <laughs> artist do that? No, I, my forte is writing. I know better than to uh, even attempt to illustrate. The, the gal that I found was just absolutely amazing. If I could tell you a little bit about the backstory of the yes, book. Please. So I wrote the book, you know, like I said, a long time ago. And uh, I am not good at illustrating. I didn't know anyone who could illustrate. And at the time that I wrote it, we didn't have resources um, as easily as we do today to fulfill our yes, dreams, I yes. guess is a good way to put it. So um, I just kind of kept it in the back of my mind. And somewhere along the line, I had met someone who was friends with a children's book publisher in New York. And I actually went to New York and met with um, the publisher. And she said that kids don't like rhymes that I should go back and rewrite my books as narratives. And I was like, hmm, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. And um, the other thing I didn't like was they would select an artist, so they connected my words with an artist, and I would have no say in it, and it would be published, and mm. I would see it at the bookstores, and that would be it. I would have no approval over it. So I went home and I said, okay, I'll kind of try my hand at converting to a narrative. And I was bored. <laughs> and if I was bored writing it, I can only imagine that yes. the, the children or the parents would be bored. So I just kind of put it aside. And over the years, I would try to connect with artists, but I just didn't find someone who had the vision. Um, and I happened to take a children's book uh, course a few years ago online. And uh, the person who ran it was giving 
um, examples of how people were finding sources online mm -hmm. to complete their children's books. And I happened to find Ambadi, and um, it, it was an experience because I had to learn things like cartoon characters are all on two feet and things like that, which you don't think of, no. you know? So if I wanted to draw Icarus on, uh, have Icarus drawn on four feet, I had to tell her. Oh, that right. sort of thing. So um, it was a learning experience from both ends, but we've developed a great relationship and we're starting on our fourth book together. That's amazing. And she's so talented, so amazingly talented. She really is. The, the illustrations in this book are absolutely fabulous. You really have to get a copy of it. If you have children, you have to get a copy for sure. And if you don't have children, pick one up for yourself because <laughs> it's really good. And I can't believe that publisher said that children don't like rhymes because all of the children I know, that's how they remember things better exactly. is when they rhyme. And, you know, when you rhyme, it, it's, it's so difficult because as a writer, you're a writer, you know that every word has to deserve to be on that page. Mm -hmm. And when you're rhyming, you have so few words to tell the story. Yes. So it's really, really difficult to turn that story very easily. And you have a rhyme on every page. I mean, I was... Fascinated. Yes. Fascinated when I read it. And it, it just had such a good tempo to it that as I read it, I kind of felt happy. <laughs> good. Yeah, it, yeah, it gave me kind of a happy feeling to have that, that tempo to the book. It really is Thank you. very, very good. And so... So I started to learn to rhyme when I was a little kid, as I said. And a lot of people ask me, you know, why rhyming? you know, how did you come about um, using mm -hmm. that method? And I think it's just a matter of when an idea comes to me in particular, it decides how it wants to manifest itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a children's book, sometimes it's a memoir, right. sometimes it's a screenplay, sometimes it's a song. It, it can come in any particular way that it wants to be born. But uh, I don't remember being read to that much as a child my family will probably disagree, but I don't remember being read to that much. Uh, but we had a lot of music in the house. And right. as you know, most lyrics rhyme. Exactly. And so I think just by going around and singing songs as I was, uh, when I was a little kid, I was just fascinated with the rhyming aspect of it. Excellent. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Cindy Massioli. Peter is a businessman. He was worried about his business. He was thinking about its growth day and night. One evening, after a long day at work, he searched the web for some help. <laughs> Next day morning, he received a call. Our creative team then visited him. We helped and launched him a new campaign. Our campaign made him a business star. A day by day new clients come, now his business is growing fast. We keep showing him a leading light, a light made his business bright. Now Peter is happy with his business life, his wife is having now happy life. Are you worried about your business life and wish you could be like Peter's life? Then visit us today for more information. We intelligently help your business soar to the top and stay there. Welcome back to the world of book reviews and beyond. I'm Judy Mario, your host, and our guest tonight is Cindy Masiolik. And Cindy uh, is an incredible writer of children's books as well as many other books. And she did contribute stories to some of our Life Choices series of books. And so I'm going to ask her a lot of other questions right now. Cindy, welcome back. Thank you. We're so glad to have you here tonight. You know, when I was a child, we lived way out in the country and we had a bookmobile oh. and the bookmobile would come every couple of weeks to our area and we would get to go on the bookmobile and check out books and I think we were allowed to have seven each wow. and so I'd get my brother and sister to go so they could each check out seven even if they weren't going to read them and then I would check out seven and then that way I would have 21 books wow. that I could read. I love to read. And I just wondered, did you love to read as a child? Is that why you became a writer? No, not at all. Um, I actually was so uh, intrigued by the writing aspect that 
it, it didn't even interest me to read. Really? Um, I was always trying to figure out how to craft the word. I loved, as I said, writing and rhyme, um, but I loved writing any, anything, any kind of a story. So I, I think I was in college. I might have been in high school before I really started to read. Uh, but as growing up, no. That's very, very amazing. Seldom. That's amazing. I think you said earlier something about you started writing when you were about four. I started writing when I was four. I have a brother who's two years older than me, and I, oh, I would just sit waiting at the door until he came home from school so he could teach me words and things that he learned at school. And if I didn't know a word, you know, like I would come up with things in my head and I'd go to my parents or I'd go to my brothers or my sister and I'd say, you know, tell me how to write this. What is the word? I want to write it down. And, and I actually have somewhere in a box in the garage um, crayon words of things oh, that wow. I wrote when I was a little kid. That's amazing. And That's the amazing. first song I wrote, actually, I think it was about six or seven. My neighbor had a little dog and I wrote a song about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. I'm always fascinated with people who don't like to read. I have a friend that's a writer uh, that lives up in Washington State, and I said something to her about reading. She said, I hate to read. And I said, well, how can you write if you hate to read? Well, nowadays, I love to read. I mean, there are some years I've read 50 or 60 books. Uh, but I, you know, I can kind of connect with that. And especially when you're writing, you're so involved in the characters and the development of the story that it's, it's hard to kind of break away and go off into an, mm. and lose yourself in another group of characters. I see. Your characters okay. kind of run your life. <laughs> so so you're, you're already in the story of your own book. Yes. And you don't want to go outside of that because I guess it would get confusing. Well, and you want to keep your story pure. Yes. You, know, you don't want to be influenced by what other people have done. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It really does. So, um, so I have written, as you said, in a variety of genre. Uh, I've written some business books, and I will have at least one more business book coming out this year. Um, I have a couple of novels, uh, and again, more this year. Um, I've written a memoir about my bird, and uh, a couple of uh, uh, inspirational uh, books, small books. So, and then, like I said, songs, screenplays, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> where, where, where do you find inspiration? If I were a new writer going into this area and wanted to write, let's say, children's books, where would I find my inspiration? Well, for me, as I said before, when an idea comes to me, it kind of determines how it wants to manifest. So I think you just have to write about something that you love because whatever you write, whatever you're creating, you're going to be with that the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. This isn't a short-term thing. I want Icarus to be around for generations. So I want to love everything about Icarus or the books that I wrote, uh, you know, the novels mm -hmm. that I, I write. I want them to really stand the test of the time. And so I, th I think you just have to really find something that speaks to you when you write it. If you wouldn't want to read it, why would you spend the time to write it? That's such a good point. And we're going to learn more from Cindy Maciolik in just a moment. Right now we're taking a break. Thank you for calling Dental Revival. Hate to say goodbye to your favorite jeans? Well, now you don't have to, because Denim Revival is here for you. Mail us your jeans and our professionals will fix it right up. We offer you all kinds of alteration services, including invisible repairs, let outs, taperings, and original hemming, or even have your own custom made jeans. Quoted the best denim repair shop by GQ, Vogue Magazine, and LA Times. Denim Revival, your search for alteration and repair ends here. Welcome back. I'm Judy Morio, and this is the World of Book Reviews and Beyond. And our guest tonight is Cindy Masiolik. Cindy is the author of Icarus, the Iguana, and many other books. She writes in many genres. 
So, Cindy, thank you for being here with us. Thank you. And I have a question for you. Okay. Do you ever get writer's block? Uh, it's so funny you say that. Uh, I have a nephew who loves to write, and I remember when he was like six or seven years old, he called me up and he goes, Andy, Cindy, what do you do when you have writer's block? <laughs> I was like... When he was that when he young. Was, yeah, he was like six, six or seven years old. Um, you know, I'm writing so many things at the same time that if I feel stuck on one, I just move to the other project. Uh, sometimes people get hung up on names, you know, character names mm -hmm. or location names and things like that. If I'm writing something and I can't think of something right off the bat, I just type all caps, something, literally. Yes. That's the word I write, something, or name, or location, or whatever. And I just continue to write, and every time that word should come up, I just write again, name, location, whatever it is in all caps. And then it's easy for me to go back and search oh, and then... What a great idea. Yeah, so I don't get hung up on it. Because I sometimes have writer's block. You know, I write oh. a lot of uh, self-improvement, self-help type of books. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll be telling people how to live their life or how to have more confidence or something and I'll think I told him that in the last book and then I kind of get stuck okay how do I say the same thing in a different way and and I only work on one book at a time so that's very interesting for me that you work on more than one mm -hmm. book at a time that way if I get stuck here I could go over there for a while and yep. be creative I like that idea then a lot. you don't waste time yeah I like that yeah. idea a lot because <laughs> all my life I've tried to learn not to do 22 things at one time, just do one thing from oh. start to finish. But it's kind of hard with a book to do it that way. It is. And my mind is I'm always working on different projects. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a book. It could be anything that's creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I, I do do that. I, you know, it's like, this file, we'll close that one. We'll pull this one up. Okay, where was I? Okay. You know. That's such a good idea. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And the other thing I do is play solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always have solitaire up on my computer. And it's really amazing. Like, I'll go, oh, what do I want that character to say? And I'll pop up solitaire and I'll play a couple games and it relaxes my mind and then boom, it comes and I close solitaire and I go back to the book. It's sort of a way of meditating, isn't it? Okay. In a way. You'll agree with me. <laughs> That's good. That's what I'll tell everybody. I'm meditating. I'm meditating. <laughs> well, you know, a few years ago when, when I got cancer, my doctor told me to go and take art lessons. Mm -hmm. And I thought he had lost his mind because... Um, I didn't ever know I could draw and or paint or anything. look how talented you are. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. But he told me he wanted me to take art lessons because it was a form of meditation. And that, that was uh, my way of getting away from the stresses of every day. Okay. And sometimes when I'm writing a book, it's my way of getting away from the stresses of mm -hmm. every day. And I think sometimes people should take a shot at writing a book, even if they think they're never going to finish it. But sit down and do something creative like that to get their mind off of the everyday issues of living life. It can be very cathartic because you have complete control over what happens to those characters. Yeah, you can kill off <laughs> people right. if you want, <laughs> can't you? I think that would be really fun to, to or, uh, write a novel and have a red-headed woman killing off people. <laughs> or just giving them a lot of challenges in their life or, you know, I mean, yeah. there's lots of things you can throw out characters. So um, it, it, it can be very uh, cleansing. Do you have a favorite character? That I've written? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't think so. Mm. Do you uh, base them on your life, on your own life at all? I think I base them uh, somewhat on experiences, mm. but no character is ever fully me. It's a composite of me or who I wish I were or how I would have handled the situation at the time or how I observed other people or something. They, they just kind of create themselves. So, of course, there's a little bit of me in everything, <laughs> but, but I can't say I have one particular character. I, I just I love everything that I write. I absolutely do. Well, I love everything you write, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being with me this evening. Thanks, I Judy. really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And thank you for being with us. Uh, Cindy, 
tell our viewing audience your uh, contact information. Okay, so <laughs> all my books can be purchased on Amazon, uh, both in print and Kindle. And my website is uh, cindymasiolik.com and it's spelled C-I-N-D-I-M-A-C-I-O-L-E-K. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you for joining us this evening. And you know, you can watch all the segments of our show on akexpertstv.com. That's akexpertstv.com. Thank you for joining us. And until I see you again, remember, you are more than enough.